We all know that the dominance of mammals on our planet was made possible thanks to the extinction of dinosaurs. Scientists are still arguing about what caused this extinction. The fall of a giant meteorite? Volcanic activity or a pandemic? But there is no doubt that if dinosaurs had not disappeared 65 million years ago, then mammals, and especially humans, would have had little chance of developing. By that time, giant lizards had ruled the Earth for 185 million years. But it is likely that they also got their chance only after the next global extinction. Today, we will tell you what version scientists put forward on this matter. Subscribe to our channel. This will allow you to learn earlier about the release of the next issue about the history of the appearance and extinction of different species of prehistoric and modern animals. And your comments and likes will help promote our videos and develop the channel. Dinosaurs got their name in 1842. This term was coined by the English biologist Richard Owen. Their name literally translates as Terrible Lizard. The scientist was impressed by their gigantic size and not at all by their huge fangs or teeth. In general, finds of giant bones have been known since ancient times. At various times, people attributed these remains to ancient giants, dragons, or other mythical creatures. All these finds gave rise to various legends that were depicted in folk art. The first scientifically documented description of these bones was made in the late 18th and early 19th centuries. The bones found in the English county of Oxfordshire in shale deposits of the Jurassic period were acquired by geology professor William Buckland. But the scientist was unable to identify these finds. In 1818, the famous naturalist Georges Cuvier visited him, and he was able to identify lizard bones in the giant fossils. For further research, Buckwin recruited marine reptile fossil specialist William Conibert. In 1821, Conibert described two new species of extinct aquatic lizards, Ichthyosaur and Plesiosaur and the result of the joint work of the two researchers with the support of George Cuvier was the description of a Mosasaurus, which was already known to science, and a new giant reptile, which was called Megalosaurus. In 1824, Buckland presented his report on this lizard at the London Conference. After this, descriptions of a new species began to appear with enviably regularity. And in the second half of the 19th century, the main discoveries related to dinosaur fossils were made in America. An unspoken competition arose between two scientists, Edward Cope and Nathaniel Marsh, to describe new species. It went down in the history of science, like the Bone Wars or the Great Dinosaur Race. As a result, between them, these researchers described 142 new species of dinosaurs that lived in North America. True, only 32 of them remain in the modern classification. Now, much more is known about the origin, habits, and appearance from 150 years ago. There are also a huge number of versions of the disappearance of most of the flora and fauna of the Mesozoic era. Today, the most popular option is the fall of the Chicxulub meteorite. During the cretaceous paleogene extinction event, 100% of all non-avian dinosaurs and most of the avian dinosaurs disappeared. Also, many species of birds, crocodiles, and mammals, which lived in the shadow of giant lizards for about 185 million years, became extinct. No fewer versions are put forward by different scientists when studying the reasons for the long-term dominance of reptiles over other animals. After the Great Permian Extinction 250 million years ago, diapsids got their chance. They became the ancestors of reptiles. Before this, another branch of the animal kingdom, the rapsids, developed more actively on the planet. It is from them that mammals originated. But dinosaurs were not immediately able to occupy the main ecological niches. 
For the first 50 million years, the giant crocodilomorph Pseudosuchia became the main predators. But about 201 million years ago, they had to make room. Another extinction event on a planetary scale had occurred. It was not as widespread as the Permian and not as famous as the Cretaceous Paleogene. This extinction occurred at the border of the Triassic and Jurassic periods. At this time, the supercontinent Pangaea began to break into smaller pieces that became modern continents. This caused the rise of huge masses of hot lava to the surface and massive volcanic eruptions throughout the planet. At the moment, it is believed that as a result of volcanic activity, huge amounts of ash and sulfur compounds were released into the atmosphere. This led to cooling throughout the planet. The ancestors of dinosaurs, unlike Pseudosuchians, turned out to be better prepared for these changes. Now, scientists named several possible reasons for this adaptability. The earliest Orphean dinosaur known to modern science is the Perotodactyl. This creature appeared almost immediately after the Permian extinction. Perotodactyl was still in no way reminiscent of those giants who, after several tens of millions of years, became the kings of nature. In size, this animal was no larger than a modern domestic cat and weighed up to 2 kilograms. The Perotodactyl moved on four long, thin legs. This ancient reptile was discovered in Poland more than 10 years ago. Judging by the number of prints on its tracks, Perotodactyls were not very common in the animal world of the early Triassic period. Among the total number of different traces, their population accounted for no more than 3% of the entire fauna of that time. Also, another creature was found recently, which slightly revealed the mystery of the distribution of dinosaurs on the planet. It was called the Oscillosaur. In 2010, an international team of researchers described 14 incomplete skeletons of a previously unknown archosaur. They were found during a scientific expedition in Tanzania. They lived here about 245 million years ago. Oscillosaurus was first named as the earliest dinosaur, but it was later reclassified into the Silesian Avra. This group of reptiles is related to dinosaurs, but in any case, this species became the earliest example of a branch of the avian line of development from crocodile-like creatures. It walked on all four legs, was 1 to 3 meters long, and weighed about 30 kilograms. The discovery of these two previously unknown creatures forced scientists to reconsider the entire history of the appearance and development of dinosaurs. Before the descriptions of the Perotodactyl and Oscillosaurus, it was believed that the first dinosaurs appeared about 230 million years ago. Returning to the reasons for their successful development on all continents, including Antarctica, several main hypotheses can be identified. High Resistance to Cold The first dinosaurs appear to have originated in tropical latitudes. At the beginning of the Triassic period, the climate on Earth was much warmer than it is now. There were no ice caps at the poles, and all the continents were still united into one giant supercontinent, Pangaea. Already 214 million years ago, dinosaurs reached the polar regions. Colder periods occurred closer to the poles, and the dinosaurs that lived there began to adapt to survival in harsh conditions earlier than that of their competitors. Therefore, by the beginning of the Triassic-Jurassic extinction, these animals had a much better chance of surviving the catastrophe. Presence of Feathers To this day, scientists have virtually no doubt that most, if not all, dinosaurs were covered with some kind of feathers. Subsequently, some of them acquired full feather cover and successfully continued to develop to this day. As you know, we're talking about birds which are essentially surviving dinosaurs. It is also known that some later species of dinosaurs were definitely warm-blooded. Perhaps these signs were also present in their ancestors who survived the Triassic-Jurassic extinction 
they better withstood the cold weather that followed a long period of volcanic activity. Greater Variety of Species Even among the earliest dinosaurs, there was a division into carnivorous, herbivorous, and omnivorous species. This conclusion was reached by a group of scientists who studied the shape of the teeth of a huge number of different dinosaurs. Based on the collected statistics, computer models of the operation of the jaws were built and the mechanism of their operation during chewing was recreated. Scientists also compared these mechanisms with similar systems in their modern relatives. Some species of ancient reptiles had blade-shaped teeth like monitor lizards, while others had serrated teeth like iguanas. It turned out that the ancestors of some herbivorous species were omnivores, and the ancestor of such a dinosaur such as the Diplodocus turned out to be a predator. Wider species diversity significantly increased the chances of dinosaurs surviving the next planetary catastrophe. A Special Way of Breathing The energy reserve of any animal largely depends on the amount of oxygen entering the body and the rate of its processing. The faster this process occurs, the more active the animal is. During the era of dinosaurs, the oxygen content in the atmosphere was lower than in our time. Therefore, many animals were quite slow and not very large. The largest Pseudosuchians, for example, reached a length of no more than 5 meters. Dinosaurs developed a respiratory system that is characteristic of modern birds. They turned out to be more energetic and deadly compared to their competitors. Rapid Reproduction and Maturation This feature was passed on to dinosaurs from diapsids. Dinosaurs are known to lay eggs. One female could give birth to dozens of new animals in a season. At the same time, baby dinosaurs quickly gained weight and turned into adult animals. This rate of reproduction could well be the reason for the rapid settlement throughout the planet and the occupation of niches vacated after extinction. Also, in general, there have been a tendency among dinosaurs to increase in size. As a result, this led to the emergence of those giants that every person knows of. We are grateful to the viewers who watched this video to the end. If you're interested in learning something new about the appearance and development of various animal species, the history of evolution in general, and the problems of modern ecology, then we advise you to pay attention to our previous videos.